In the late 2000s, a torrent of rumours swept the internet about a revival of Nintendo's long dormant Kid Icarus series on the Wii. A number of small sites claimed that such a game was in development before IGN's Matt Casamassina acknowledged its existence on the site's Nintendo podcast. According to him, the game was set to be unveiled at E3 2008, but as the event came and went, Kid Icarus Wii was nowhere to be seen. The hearsay would persist for years later without the title ever surfacing and a curious lack of developers coming out of the woodwork to verify its existence. Thus, we are left with many questions. Did such a project ever truly exist? If so, what was it? And what happened to it? To make sense of it all, we must first revisit the history of one of Nintendo's recurring partners throughout the noughties. Factor 5 Inc. was the US arm of game developer Factor 5 based in San Rafael, California. The company built a strong relationship with Nintendo around the turn of the 21st century. The full extent of this collaboration was never divulged officially, but the two grew close after the Star Wars Rogue Squadron series came about. The first released in 1998 on Windows and Nintendo 64. Finding success with Nintendo's machine, Factor 5 then pledged its sequel, Rogue Leader, as a GameCube exclusive, which released alongside the console. The GameCube ultimately didn't take off in quite the way they had hoped for, but Nintendo gave credit to Factor 5's launch effort as one of the reasons for it finding initial success. As their partnership proved fruitful, Factor 5 ended up being contracted for a first party project using one of their IPs. A third Rogue Squadron game, Rebel Strike, was released in 2003, and as work was underway on their Secret of Nintendo game, the company began planning a fourth instalment. The developers at Factor 5 were determined to make the next game radically different and believed the logical way forward for the series was the introduction of online play. Unfortunately for them, this was not an avenue which Nintendo was majorly interested in pursuing. They refused to embrace online in any meaningful way with the GameCube and showed further reluctance as they planned their next system. Adamant that this was still the correct path to keeping Rogue Squadron fresh, Factor 5, albeit on good terms, drifted apart from Nintendo and their remaining GameCube game was cancelled. From there, they partnered with Microsoft, who offered to help them realise their vision for Rogue Squadron 4 using Xbox Live. This was one of a few projects on the table during their days developing for Xbox, though in the end, none of them would come to be. With unforeseen shifts in the management of Microsoft Game Studios, Factor 5 lost support for their games in development. In 2004, with their Microsoft contracts falling apart, they were soon tapped by Shuhei Yoshida to collaborate with Sony. The two entered a partnership deal midway through the year, which was intended to produce multiple exclusive titles for the PlayStation 3. However, this was yet another alliance that eventually turned sour. Lair, their flight combat game made from the remnants of a cancelled Rogue Squadron for the Xbox 360, encountered a plethora of issues during its development. Factor 5 thus failed to meet the terms of their agreement with Sony, which specified that Lair would be ready in time for the North American launch window of the PS3 in 2006. This led to the subsequent cancellation of their other Sony projects, including a strategy RPG rife with bloody violence called Animal Wars, and Virus, a shoot 'em up plan for BSN. While Factor 5's situation was on the decline, Nintendo meanwhile was preparing to launch their next system, the Wii. At E3 2006, the next Super Smash Bros. game heading to the console, Brawl, made its debut. Among the new playable characters featured during the announcement trailer was none other than Pit, the central protagonist of the Kid Icarus series. This served as Pit's first major appearance in many years, returning with a modernised character design and a new bow capable of dividing into twin blades. What followed was a surge in fan demand for Kid Icarus to return with a new game on Nintendo's upcoming platform. As we know today, it would be a long time before these prayers were answered, but behind the scenes, Nintendo was listening. By the start of 2007, the gears were already in motion, and the next installment in the series was being discussed internally at length. Their first choice for who would develop the game, surprisingly, was not a division of their own. In March, they contracted Factor 5 Inc. to work with them on a Nintendo Wii revival of Kid Icarus. As Lair had failed to meet the expectations of Sony's higher-ups, their exclusive multi-game deal had been axed. Factor 5 would still be obligated to complete the game 
time, but was now free to pursue additional ventures. In March 2007, this tightly veiled Kid Icarus became their first new undertaking. Nintendo allowed the developers a fair share of creative freedom as they began to experiment with the property. NCL's mission statement outlined that it would be the first 3D game in the series to be built for the Wii, but outside of that, they were more or less given free reign. For the first several months, a small group at Factor 5 found themselves in the thick of an extensive exploration, deliberating of what a new Kid Icarus could be like. According to one member of the team who was party to the entirety of its life cycle, the company's management held an iron grip over the direction it would take and steered it in one not everyone agreed with. I discussed the concepting phase of Factor 5's Kid Icarus with David Lamera, who is one of the main artists on board the project. The managerial staff, as recounted by Lamera, Mera pushed the game down a quote-unquote more mature route. The project paid close attention to the source material of the original NES game, but took a bold departure from these cartoonish retro origins, adopting a slightly darker tone. Recognisable characters and enemies were present, yet reimagined for this new world, an evolution not dissimilar to the one Nintendo themselves once opted for with the Legend of Zelda series. They envisioned an older, more experienced Pit, highly skilled and hardened by combat. His appearance went through a myriad of revisions, ranging from a familiar toga-clad hero to a caped warrior in black. Many options were under consideration, as the project's central ideas fluctuated throughout 2007. Some took the gritty angle to extremes, outfitting the angelic hero in battle armor, others imagined him in simple white robes. The end product fell somewhere in the middle. There were many ideas for Pit's weapons being tossed around too. One concept, inspired by his Smash Brothers iteration, imagined his bow as being concealed in two separate sheaths at his hips that could be combined for ranged attacks or swung in close quarters. Factor 5 developed several rough ideas for a story during their time working on Kid Icarus, but aesthetics and narrative was never the project's focus. They were all devised in service of the core gameplay experience they were hoping to create, which was dramatically different from the 2D side-scroller of old. Their vision for Kid Icarus saw Pit taking to the skies, armed with the ability to fly freely for the first time ever. In their game, he was no longer limited to fluttering, but was an experienced flyer who could shoot down any enemies with his bow and arrow in tandem. Introducing this element of flight combat called upon the studio's years of experience from the Rogue Squadron games, an attempt to capitalise on their strengths, and put an interesting twist on the franchise in its transition to 3D. Their idea of ageing Pit up to a young adult was simply a natural leap in logic for the story to take, in order to give context to his new power. In August, work finally began on a prototype for the game, as their time on Lair came to an end and more developers became available. By now, it had been assigned the simple working title, Icarus. Although, that's not to say it would have omitted Young Pit completely. Before development commenced on the prototype, Nintendo had expressed a desire for the game to at least represent in some manner their current version of the character, as seen in Smash Bros. They even went as far as having their in-house artists at NCL create a 3D character model for the demo to potentially make use of. I was able to obtain a glimpse of it which shows the design was almost identical to the one seen in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Interestingly, they included one of the three sacred treasures from Kid Icarus as objects, the Mirror Shield. Please note that this was merely a test animation, and the creature in the clip was actually from another project Factor 5 was working on, a planned reboot of Turrican. Sometimes their artists would blend assets from different projects for experiments such as this. Despite Nintendo's suggestion, Factor 5's management decided against including it in their prototype and moved forward with making their own model of Adult Pit from scratch. With that said, their greater plan for the theoretical full game was to have the player begin their journey controlling him as his more traditional younger self. One work in progress draft of the plot summary they had illustrates how the story might have utilised this form of the character. In this iteration, the game begins with Kid Pit in Sky world. It would have taken place not long after the original title, when, in mysterious circumstances, he finds himself banished from Skyworld by his mistress Lady Palatina, accused of crimes against the Heavenly Kingdom. Years pass, and he would have matured into an adept warrior from defending the overworld, his wings now finally strong enough for flight. It is around this point at which a new darkness would start engulfing the Earth, and Pit sets off to put an end to this rising evil, hopefully finding his redemption. In many of the early 
peculiar concepts, Factor V's artists explored how to best personify his descent from Palutena's graces through his design. One or two of them portrayed him with blackened wings and a demonic arm warped by dark magic. Another placed him in broken shackles. The most common idea was a tattoo on his arm, either a symbolic image or a literal inscription of a supposed crime in an ancient language. This suggestion in particular was being strongly considered, but eventually fell by the wayside. Of course, these were merely rough, underdeveloped ideas for a potential game, as recalled by former workers. Largely, very little of that is indicative of anything featured in the playable demonstration. In their list of priorities, the plot had always been secondary to the gameplay and was mostly a patchwork of vague concepts from staff members. The Icarus prototype was developed primarily over several months by a team comprising around 20 people across different departments of the company. In the end, two separate 3D models for Adult Pit were put together. One was slightly more simple and cartoony, whereas the other took a more photorealistic approach, adding a scar to his right cheek. Both were made compatible with the playable demo. It consisted of one environment depicting a floating structure suspended in the sky for players to explore. Pit faced off against two different enemies during the stage, both loosely based around creatures from the first two games. These were the bats from Kid Icarus of Myths and Monsters, as well as an alternative version of the necklace from the NES game, now with three eyes. Given that it was an early prototype, it was relatively bare bones in terms of looks, but was leaning towards a more gothic art style. It ran in Factor 5's in-house engine, which was used for all of their original Wii projects. This was an engine based around the technology used for Lair, translated for Nintendo system, that was apparently capable of 60 frames per second while rendering a high number of objects on screen. Julian Egbrecht, the former CEO of Factor 5, once described the framework as being technically the most impressive thing you would have ever seen on the console during an interview with IGN. The game was controlled with the Wii's nunchuck peripheral for movement, and the remote pointer for aiming. Players could freely take off into the air at will, flying without limits, hovering and strafing to avoid attacks. Pit could launch his bow either on the ground or in midair, and was equipped with a wing dash attack, allowing him to swiftly charge at foes while airborne. He would also have to collect orbs scattered throughout the stage. By March 2008, the first prototype was completed, but according to David Lamera and several other sources, this was the point at which the project began to fall apart. After a year in the works, Factor 5 had delivered Icarus to representatives of Nintendo. Every former developer I was able to discuss the project with had their own version of events, but the consensus is that NCL simply didn't like it. One X Factor 5 worker, for instance, claimed that after some consideration, the direction was deemed too unorthodox for them to continue investing in it. Joe Spataro, a former animator who was involved with the demonstration, had this to say. With Icarus, I feel like we were missing the point. Nintendo sent us the model of Kid Icarus, very much like the one that appears in Smash Brothers, but we didn't use it. We made our own version, and it was more mature, maybe even a little dark. It felt more like Devil May Cry. I knew Nintendo would never go for the adult version of Pit. In fact, I'd wager they took it as an insult that we didn't use their version. I reached out to Julian Egbrecht to see if he would comment on the game. Although he did passingly acknowledge the developer's first party Nintendo projects, he was not able to comment further. Most who had some form of interaction with the project are reluctant to describe it as simply a pitch, but rather a period of experimental pre-production between the two companies. It stands today as an unconventional first attempt to revive Kid Icarus for the modern day, a bold alternative vision of the franchise that wasn't meant to be. With Icarus Icarus no more, NCL eventually put Masahiro Sakurai in charge of the next Kid Icarus. Factor 5 undeterred pitched for another Nintendo IP, and their good relationship continued. At the same time, they'd embarked upon what would be one of their last major projects, a multi-platform Superman game.